Hi, and welcome to Spotlight on Bennington. I'm John Shanahan, the director of the Better Bennington Corporation. And once a year, we like to come down to the farmer's market and check in and see how they're doing. Uh, we wanted to get uh, to the Tuesday uh, farmer's market over at Greenberg's, but we couldn't hook that up. But we brought you here to the end of Riverwalk in the Bennington Station parking lot. And it's Saturday morning, and it's uh, actually not such a bad day. It's kind of nice out here. With us today is Alan Baker. Alan, yeah. thanks a lot for joining us. You're welcome. I'm a member of the Farmer's Market Board and I'm here this Saturday actually helping out the Master Gardener plant sale which is right behind the camera and they're just about sold out which is really good for uh, not even the end of the day yet. There are a few fruit, fruit plants left but they've had a really great sale. Good. What was the crowd like? We got here a little bit late today but I think the crowds come early don't they? A lot of them come early to uh, try to get the best stuff in case someone sells out, particularly with the Master Gardener plant sale, because that was where I was most of the morning. People had hoarded their plants waiting for the bell to ring so they got the best selection. And that often happens uh, for, for some of the other vendors too. Oh, great. Can you tell us some of the ones, uh, the vendors that are here today? And uh, well, Alicia will take us around with the camera, but who can people find here on a regular Saturday morning? Uh, we start down at that end on my left would be Polly Meadows uh, Goat Farm. They produce uh, chocolate milk, goat milk, yogurt, chev, and they have some of the most delicious blue cheese ever. And they live across the road from me because I get to sample some new samples all the Good time. Deal. Uh, there's a, some new potters down the end that just joined the market. I don't know them very well. There's uh, Jamtastic. They've been with us for a few years. Uh, Running Brook Maple Farm from Hoosick. They've, this is their second year with us. Paper Cakes and Scissors. That's actually our uh, co-president co, co for the That's farm. Emily Gold, That's right? Emily Gold, and she has an assistant here today. She's not here. Mighty Food. They've been with us now several years from Ponnell. Uh, also from Ponell is uh, Wildstone, and they've been uh, some of the oldest uh, organic farmers in the county. They've been doing it for years, over two, two, over two decades. Who else do we have? Uh, Ray, Crazy Russian Girls and True Love Farm out of Shaftesbury. They've gone into full time now. They've got rid of their day jobs, so it's a scary proposition. Good for them. Uh, Saunders Family Farm, they've been our main meat person since day one, I think. They've been here really a long time, and they're from Greenwich. And then we have the music people, and that changes every 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 week's a new yep. music person. And we have a woodworker from Massachusetts. She used to have greenhouses now she's sort of retired gone into making really exquisite bowls out of interesting wood and that that's a nice nice addition to the market it's a little small today there's usually a few more people maybe someone went on vacation and i'm not here every week so i don't know all the other people but last week we were at mayfest and it was a pretty good overall crowd and it's it's growing how many vendors you had about 15 20 vendors at mayfest I think it was at least 20, yes. It, was, okay. it seemed like it was a, a large setup. You went uh, uh, a couple hundred feet anyway of yeah, just vendor, vendor, vendor. And, and there was a few more food producers there that just joined the market. They're not here today. Great. So at the farmer's market, in case you haven't been down, it's not just come and pick up some vegetables. I mean, there's, there's chicken, pork, veal, beef, eggs. Um, then, of course, the vegetables, plants, woodwork, pottery, all sorts of stuff that you can pick up here on a weekly basis. There's a, that and maple syrup and jam and just looking at Saunders Family Farm, anything you see in a grocery store, there's about two dozen cuts of types of meat yeah. from pork, beef, veal, and nitrate free. So that, that, yeah, if that's you're a, looking for that. Yeah, that, that's a huge menu of what's available here at the uh, farmer's market. I think one thing, or one person I know is missing is Chuck Suss. He's not here today, is he? Chuck is not here today. He's usually cornerstoning down there by the uh, uh, music, doing, cooking whatever happens to be the most prevalent vegetable in the season. Yeah. So he'd go around to the different uh, vegetable growers, say, what's, your, what's the main thing you have this week? And that's what he cooks with, gives out recipes and how to cook what he's cooking there. He's an excellent chef, and he's yeah, a yeah. he's a real oh, he's a real gem to be on our board, and all the helping out he does for almost no pay at all. Well, and he's just by himself come down fun to watch him cook. And I didn't realize he picks up all the ingredients when he gets here. All the main vegetable ingredients and the herbs and other things he gets elsewhere, but the main vegetable, whether it's okay, we got zucchinis, lots of zucchini, 
he makes up some delicious dish with zucchini. Yeah. And what time are you open here on Saturdays? Nine to ten, ten to one. Ten to one every Saturday. Every you start Saturday. in May to October. In May to end of October, yes. Is, was Memorial Day weekend your first weekend opening uh, here? I, Mayfest. No, no, Mayfest was we were a couple of weeks earlier than that. So you've already been down here yeah. for a couple of weeks, and then Mayfest is there. How long have we been here? First weekend in May. First weekend in May. So it's the whole month of May, right until the very last weekend in October. October, and then in November, December, we have our holiday markets. Yeah, the indoor markets indoor downtown. Markets. And yep. we're looking this year, maybe the, some of the vegetable growers would like us to do it twice a month. So we're looking into doing that. If we can afford it, costs us more to run the winter markets. We have to rent a space, and that costs more. And then you know, all the added costs of being indoors rather than being letting the town let us use this free every Saturday. Yeah, well good for the town. We'll, we'll work on finding you a spot that you can do it every other week indoors without uh, a lot of expense. But um, why don't you join us as uh, Alicia takes you around and look at some of the um, vendors that are here, the booths and the products, and we'll talk to you as we're going around the show. Hey, our first uh, stop here is at the Throw Your Own Pottery, I'm saying this wrong, How, what is it called? Uh, throw your own pottery on the wheel. Right. Oh, so I was right. And you're Gabrielle? Gabrielle. And you're Aaron? Yep. And it's your first week here at the farmer's market? It is. Where are you from? For this year. Okay. We're, we're local, um, Shaftesbury and in Hoosick. Great. And now tell me what you do. You can have people come up here and make their own pottery? There will be a wheel here and they can come up and throw a piece on the pottery or on the wheel and I'll do the rest of the work. It'll go home and I'll trim it and fire it two times and I'll, we'll come back and if that person wants to buy their piece back they can purchase it at that time or maybe I can have it shipped to them. Oh so they don't even have to pay you when they come. They do it, they bring it back and then they can decide if they want right. it? Right. Five dollars to get on the wheel. So what will happen is people get a shot to throw on the wheel if they would like to continue because usually it, it's going to be hard to get your first piece to be a piece. You'll yeah. get a second shot um, and then people can have us trim and glaze them and it takes two firings so what then happens is we'll either ship it to them, they can prepay for that, or they can come back and purchase it at another event and we're working on getting the wheel up and out. It just takes a little bit of power so engineering that today was a little tough. Yeah. What are you using? A generator? I can see the cord going. We're going we to we right to the to the truck. Oh, right to the truck. Yeah, but it's not enough of an oomph, so we're looking for more power next week. Are you there on Tuesdays as well, over at Greenberg's, or just the Saturday one? Not, not yet. We're working on getting there, maybe. Okay. Depends. Possibly. Well, good. I hope so. But if not, make sure you stop here on Saturday, and uh, make sure you stop by this booth and say hi to Gabrielle and Aaron, and um, throw your own piece of pottery. Our next stop, we're going to talk to two vendors here. We're at um, Poly Meadow Farms and Cricket Creek Farms. Uh, both have um, dairy products and there's cheese. That you have goats though. Come on into the screen. And what's your name? I'm Jennifer. Jennifer? Yeah. Thanks for meeting with us today. You raise goats on your we farm. Raise goats. And um, Alan was saying some of the best blue cheese he's ever had is yours. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. How well, do you make it? How do I make it? Uh, well, actually, I make a, a regular chev, and then I put it in a mold and add the, okay. the, the special cultures for the blue cheese, and then let it age for about two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. oh, well, we got to try that. And uh, we'll, we'll tell you how good it is, but you have to stop down here and make sure you try it. You have samples of it. I see it out here now, so that's great. We're going to be digging into that. <laughs> and then Cricket Creek right next door, um, you, it's cow farm. It is. All right. And you have cheeses over here as well. Um, I don't have two kinds of raw cow's milk cheese. Oh, oh two, we have two. two kinds of raw cow's milk cheese here. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we also sell raw milk and cuts of beef and all kinds of things at our farm store. So. Fantastic. And do you, are you on Tuesdays also or just Saturdays? Just Saturdays. Just Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason to come down here on Saturdays. And you can see it's uh, grass-fed beef that you have. And you've sold out of quite a few things already today, I noticed. So it's yes, been a it's, good morning. It's been a good day. Good. Yeah. Well, thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you. And let's head down to the next one. Yeah. We're here at Gemtastic in Deneen. Right. Uh, you're here selling the jams that your husband makes. Right. My husband makes them all small batch jams. They're all natural. There's no preservatives, no artificial ingredients in them. He's just introduced sugar-free, which is, you can't tell the difference between them. And they're only five calories, and uh, they're absolutely delicious. So for the people that need to eat sugar-free, yep. we have that for them. We sold out a blueberry, which is his newest one, already today. And then he has all sorts of other jams. He has strawberry rhubarb, rhubarb from our gardens, apple pie, which is literally apple pie in a jar, just no pastry. Mm -hmm. 
uh, strawberry balsamic, which is delicious. The balsamic will intensify the strawberries. You won't taste it, but you'll smell it. Mm -hmm. So it just makes the strawberries even better tasting. Yeah. Apricot Riesling speaks for itself if you love apricots. Um, raspberry maple is becoming one of our biggest sellers. It's uh, fresh raspberries with a little Vermont maple syrup in it. And our wild Maine blueberries are our blueberry with uh, Madagascar vanilla, a little cinnamon, a little uh, pectin in there. It's delicious. Is that the one you sold out of today? I've sold out quite a few. Now I have oh, one good. blueberry left oh, or maybe one or two. Okay. I've sold out of this newest one which you just made oh. last week. This is hot for habanero cranberry. I'll try which that is one. okay. Try that one. <laughs> Get a good amount on there. Mm. That one's nice and spicy. Yeah. That one's great. Polly's gonna try it on chicken. All our jams you can cook with. They're absolutely delicious as a glaze. You can thin them down for vinaigrettes on salads and you can even on a cheese and cracker. I put a lot of these in my plain yogurt. Oh, mix uh, it right in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we have people that put this, his biggest sellers is hot for habanero strawberry. Oh, is it? The That'll hit you right away. One would be great on meat. Yeah. Oh. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 And yeah. chicken, meat. Um, we put the habanero strawberry on salmon. It's awesome as a glaze on the oh, strand. Fantastic. You should try some. I will. Okay. So I, I and you had this strawberry. I had the strawberry. Yeah. I'm going to try the raspberry balsamic. Uh, balsamic. Strawberry balsamic. Yeah. This one's really nice. This is great in plain yogurt. Mm -hmm. You can put this on mm. chicken too. Isn't that That's awesome? Wonderful. Yeah. Now you'll smell it's really, the balsamic, really, really but good. you won't taste it. That's what's so beautiful about it, and it just intensifies the And strawberries. they're going green, too. So right. you, you bring your containers back. Bring mm -hmm. nine jars, empty jars back to us, we punch a card. We reuse the jars, keep them out of the landfill, and you get a free jar jam. Oh, great idea. So, you know, yeah, I think I'm going to... it's great. I just got a couple more jars today from a client, so... Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And, um... Jamtastic. You don't... <laughs> it's jam. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so you don't have to save up your jars. You keep track of who's no, bringing them back. Yeah, we'll give you a punch card. It can take you a year, two years. We don't care. Yeah. Just as long as we get the jars back and keep them out of the landfill, we're happy and Europe will be happy with a free jar. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Denise, very much. Thank Let's you very head much. down to the next booth. <laughs> We made one quick stop before we get down to the vegetable section just because your product is so interesting. And what it can you tell me a little bit about it? Um, well, we don't tap trees. We make, um, we make our syrup out of the bark of the shagbark hickory tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, we make an extract and reduce it and add sugar. And you can use it for cooking, you can use it on pancakes, waffles, um, and I guess that's about it. Oh, it's fantastic. When I tried it, it kind of looks like maple syrup. Mm -hmm. and uh, But the aroma that comes up through your nose, you can smell the... Uh, sort of like a campfire, mm. woodsy, Yeah, earthy. tastes good. It smells yeah. good. It's just incredible. Yeah. Um, and now, are you here every Saturday? Yes, we are. And do you do the Tuesday show as well? Absolutely. Oh, so you do both? Yep. Very good. Yep. Make sure you stop here when you come down to the farmer's market. <laughs> it tastes like you're camping. It does. It really it tastes like but you're at a campfire. Bad, not in a bad smoke in your eyes way. Yeah, no. there you go. It's really wonderful. Make sure you try it. And uh, free samples. By the way, I didn't even mention that. There's free samples all the way through the farmer's market. That in itself is mi uh, worth making a trip down here. Our last stop, we picked a, a vegetable stand, and we're here at Wildstone Farms, and I'm here with Joy. And Joy, thanks a lot for giving us a few seconds today. Uh, your booth looks great, by the way. It's not just vegetables. It's uh, the, the plants also and the flowers. Yes. Um, but I heard that you were one of the all longest uh, running organic farmers in Bennington County. Yes, we've been uh, certified since 1989. 1989 you've been yes. doing it? Uh -huh. And all of this you go, where is that? Is that down? In it's in Powell. Powell, it is. Uh -huh. And you're at both the Saturday and the Tuesday market over at Greenberg's? Yes. Right. How, many, how many years have you been doing the farmer's market? Uh, we were uh, founding members of the market, so this is our 10th year. Oh, good I for you. Believe. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, Joy, thank you very much. You had some items out here that we were just talking about. What is this right here? Kohlrabi. 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 All right. And is that, who, who eats that? <laughs> who eats that? <laughs> How do you eat it? <laughs> uh, we eat it raw. We, we grate it into a salad. You grate it into a salad. And I'm repeating what you're saying just in case it's not picking you up. So it's uh, just like a crunchy? Yes. And what kind of flavor is it? Uh, very mild cabbage, cabbage -y type flavor. Mild cabbagey flavor, mm -hmm. something like, like I'm thinking coleslaw uh, when you're saying that. A little bit uh, different texture, more crunchy. Crunchier. Yes. Oh, very good. What else do you have here? And uh, I'm crossing in front of the camera. Uh, Sorry. Lettuce. Some lettuce here. 
We have three kinds of kale and uh, Swiss chard, rainbow chard, and bok choy. God, it looks beautiful too. Thank it you. looks it's really beautiful, plus some flowers. Well, Joy, thank you. And eggs? Eggs also. Oh, you have eggs too from your farm? Yes. Oh, very good. Thank you for giving us the time today, Joy. And that's going to wrap us up, uh, wrap it up here at the farmer's market. But as you know, we always show you uh, more than one thing on each episode. And today we're going to take you outside of downtown, which we started a few months ago, when something in Bennington happens that's uh, really exciting and lots of fun. Um, Alicia and I will head up there and show you what's going on. And today we're going to take you up to the top of Harwood Hill and uh, reintroduce you to Sunset Playland. Uh, Sunset Playland uh, was uh, reopened uh, a couple of weeks ago and I've been hearing that they're doing well on Saturday so I wanted to make sure you get to see it. As promised, we're up here at Sunset Playland, and I'm here with Glenn Walken. Glenn, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome. And uh, Glenn, we were told that you were the one that can give us a tour of the place and tell us about the course, about the holes, about the sponsors. I'll I'll do the best I can. Oh, very good. Now, there's is there 18 holes? 18 holes. Each one sponsored by a uh, different company, whether it be Bank of Bennington. Uh, Bellissimo Hair Salon, Home Depot, Greenbergs. Uh, we had Kevin's. Kevin's. I have a whole list if you like. Oh, well, sure. We'll talk. We'll, we'll name the sponsors. Absolutely. And I remember I was somewhere a couple of weeks ago, and all the sponsors had to leave because you had a, a a grand opening for the sponsors of the holes. That's right. Uh, the Thursday before uh, the place opened, which was a Saturday, Memorial Day weekend, we had a sponsors party. Oh, fantastic! So everybody uh, showed up, and uh, we had a DJ and had the go-karts going. Everybody was running around having a good time. Oh, fantastic. And you were saying before we went on camera that the sponsors, a lot of them made the pieces that are around the holes? They did. Uh, Vermont, um, uh, New England Custom and Timber Frames made this uh, structure here. Uh, Bellissimo made the um, log cabin. Uh, the sugar house was custom made and of course the monument. Yeah, they're fantastic. And we were, I don't know if Alicia can get the picture of the um, cover bridge behind us, but you mentioned the sign down there is uh, because of Irene. It says that it's closed for flood damage. Under construction. <laughs> Under construction. Closed to flood damage. That's a riot. Well, can you take us around a little bit? And um, I don't know if Alicia got pictures of all the holes and got out there on the course, but let's go right into the middle of the course and watch some people golf. We're, we're starting at the fourth hole here, and it's the one you can probably see best from the street. Um, and it's a really interesting one. Glenn, can you tell us a little bit about this monument? Uh, the monument, the, the stone was custom cut by uh, an outfit in Chester uh, named All Stone. Uh, it's a quarry up there and they, they custom cut the stone. And then a mason came in, his name is, I hope I'm saying it right, Jeremy Hebrick, uh, and he put it all together. So he built it right here? He did. And you were mentioning that it's not quite done yet? Not quite done. It, uh, it's going to have a light on top and some windows and the door just like the monument. Is. Yeah. It's real. It's really beautiful, just the way it is, all by itself. So this is the fourth hole. Uh, and that's the one you can see as you're driving by it on Harwood Hill. And there's some other really interesting ones. We're not going to show you all the holes, but just pick out a hand, uh, a handful to show you today. Tony's wife. Um, God. Okay, we're at the 17th hole. We thought we'd give this one a shot to just show you because it's a really interesting uh, hole here. But um, Glenn and I picked it because it looks like it's a can't-miss kind of hole. And I shouldn't be saying that before I start, but it uh, um, goes up. And I don't know what kind of shot you get out of this, but... Oh, you're good. Please go in, please go in. I don't want to see it coming back down here. There it goes. Uh, I can do that, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm 
further away when I was with Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm back where I want you. I don't know if you hear Alicia laughing in the background, but uh, that was my third shot. That's my fourth shot. Come on, baby, come on. <laughs> there. So this is par five, right? <laughs> okay, and uh, Glenn wasn't laughing. That's because he hasn't shot yet. But uh, you got to get Alicia in front of the camera here. There's, oh, hoo, 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 but right over it. There are a bunch of kids in the background laughing at us. There, that's three. Nice shot. All right, well, Glenn, thanks for taking us around the, uh, the golf course. Next we go up. There's also um, batting cages up here. Batting cages, uh, go-karts. The go-karts, too. Yeah. And then um, Ricky, uh, Ricky Roy, uh, the owner, said that he was also going to be putting in swing sets. They are putting in swing sets, and uh, there's going to be a party room for a private birthday party. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be a great idea. It, it's just beautiful up here, and Alicia and I were talking. The view up here is beautiful. The sky is big, which um, I live right down the street, and that's the best part of living up on Harwood Hill. You get to see uh, beautiful views. I'm trying to talk them into a Ferris wheel. Yeah. Talk them into it. That would be great. Uh, that would be perfect, actually. You'd be able to see forever from up here. Okay, let's head up to the go-karts and see what that looks like up there. Let's go. Okay, we're at the top of the hill right now and with the go-karts behind us, but before we go look at them, um, what are the hours here at Sunset Playland? Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, noon to 9 p.m. Right. And w now you buy tickets, like a ticket to go go-karting, a ticket exactly. to... Well, you buy uh, tickets over here where this snack bar is. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that works the same way for the batting cages. And you come up here, you give you a ticket, and you get up and go. Fantastic. I think Alicia is showing you right now the uh, list of sponsors for the go-karts. And as you can see, there's three spots left available. Um, the, the, each car is painted up, uh, I was look, talking to Ricky Roy, how cool the cars look with their names on it there. Great way to get your name out there. Uh, just give Ricky Roy a call here at uh, Sunset Playland. And Glenn, what's the number here? Do you know the phone number? Uh, I don't. Uh, I know the uh, .com is www.sunsetplayland.com uh, and it's on Facebook. But we can talk to the owner and uh, get the phone number. Alright, so it's sunsetplayland.com, has the information, has the hours, has the prices, exactly. and it has information for um, sponsoring? I believe it does. Okay. Uh, and it, we're also on Facebook. And on Facebook. Very good. Well, let's go over and meet uh, Ricky Roy. He's the owner of the uh, Sunset Playland. We're here up in the uh, racetrack of the golf course, uh, the go karts right now, and I'd like to introduce Ricky Roy. Ricky, thank Hi you guys. very much. Um, Ricky's the owner of the property and brought it all back up to the way it uh, was meant to be, and even better than it used to be, actually. Um, how long have you been up and running now? We've been up and running for about three weeks now. We kicked off Memorial Day weekend. Place was packed. Couldn't get another person in, which was great. We want all the people we can have up here. And since then, we've uh, been going for it with the weather up and down. Yeah, it's and, been kind of um, tough right now. Yeah, right? a little tough, but uh, we're just getting the word out right now and get people up here to have fun. And Glenn and I were talking, you have some stuff coming up too. You want to, um, well, you said you're bringing in a Ferris wheel next week? Not quite a Ferris <laughs> no, wheel. No, okay. It, yeah, it, no. Maybe, <laughs> a nice, maybe a nice swing set. And then uh, we're working on the batting cages also, I'm sure, as previously mentioned. So probably three, four weeks, they should be complete. That's been a couple month process getting that going. And uh, everyone's all excited about that. So we'll announce that when that's up and running. And get a whole other crowd up here to have some more fun. Ricky, what's the phone number up here? 442-3555. And we're also on Facebook, Sunset Playland. And we're on the website, sunsetplayland.com. And I hope you were able to hear all of that with him going around. You could. Picked everything up. Oh, good. Um, well, I guess our last thing we're going to do today is uh, take a spin on the racetrack. Um, and you said one of these is a fast one? And you know which one that is? Oh, okay. <laughs> you have to try we'll them all see who out wins. to discover the fast one. Oh, all so right. you come up, you try all eight cards out, and then you'll know which one's the fastest, and you'll be all set. Or call me. Well, okay, and he'll, five bucks, he'll tell you which one is the fast one. All right, and we get to pick out which ones we want, well, I guess we should take the first three in the row, right? You gonna come around with us? Sure. All right. Okay. 
Good. What's up and down? All right. Gas is on the right. Brake is on the left. Keep your steering hands on the steering wheel at all times. Don't look back. That's when you end up losing control. So keep your eyes forward. If you happen to bump and get off the track, stay in your cart. I will come and get you and get you back on the track. Uh, no bumping, no rubbing. You get about 10 laps. You see a yellow caution. I'll give you one more. And then you have you come back into the pit. Get, come back over here and then stay in your cart and I'll shut off your car. Keep your foot off the gas. Guess what? Well, you got to you got to buy ice cream. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you guys very much. It was nice meeting you too. Thank you. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's show. We appreciate you hanging in there with us. Um, as you can see, we're having a lot of fun up here on Sunset Playland. Remember that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, noon till nine p.m. The July show will be back downtown again and we'd like to introduce you to the new Vermont Voltage soccer team and uh, the, the building that they're going to be doing down, down there downtown. Thanks again for joining us on behalf of Legacy Images of Vermont, Alicia Romack and myself, John Shanahan, thanks for joining us.